Cleared, so good afternoon everyone. Um, I'm here representing also one of the partners of HUGE. So in NOI mode, we are leading the ACT core package on the training and technology transfer. But at the same time, uh, I'm also coordinating this uh, CPU project, which is another indirect project on the Atlantic area. So uh, what I'm going to do today is uh, explain a little bit what CPU is, but also I will give you two more examples of projects with involvement with ION, with uh, GenCom, and uh, something that was published a couple of months, a few months ago, uh, on a big project for uh, hydrogen rollout in Ireland. Yeah. I'm going to go a little bit uh, fast on the different things because they want to cover a uh, few things. Okay? So for the CFUR project, uh, this is um, an Atlantic area project. As I said, uh, it, is, it covers all the regions on the Atlantic coast. And we have partners uh, similar to HUGE. We have partners also on the quadruple helix. Okay, so we have partners in academia, research innovation, industry, the civil society, uh, and the government, and some of some uh, non-profit organizations as well. Yeah. So basically, one of the uh, issues that we see in the Atlantic area is uh, some challenges that, at the end, quite similar to what we are facing in the NPA region. So in most of these cases, we have identity territories, which they have very large energy dependence, expensive fuel uh, energy inputs, and very bad grid connections. Yeah. So when we started that uh, about three years ago, we started preparing the project uh, for submission, uh, and the project really started in December 2017, so we are about four and a half years in the project now. What we saw is that uh, one of the common issues in the Atlantic area was that uh, there were a lot of islands. And uh, these islands are in the middle of the ocean. Okay? So it doesn't make a much sense to try to uh, put very big installations in these islands if then the transport of any excess of fuel that you can produce in these islands is very far away from the coast. It would be quite expensive then to transport. Yeah. So in a sense, what we are trying to do is to see if we can do uh, small to medium installations in these islands and basically making sure that these islands are self-sustainable. Okay? So we are not really aiming at having uh, the, uh, the Canary Islands or Madeira as an exporter of fields, like, uh, for example, Australia might be looking at okay? so exporting the hydrogen to Japan. Our aim is to make sure that these islands are self-sustainable. Okay? So of course this comes to a contradiction with uh, these uh, usual technologies that uh, you need to scale up as much as possible to make sure that prices are low. Okay, so in a sense we have this other challenge to make things small but economically visible at the same time. Okay? <coughs> at the same time, looking at islands, we thought that because these are close communities, it could be ideal locations for uh, investing in these new technologies. Because if we look at uh, even Finland or uh, Germany, uh, bigger countries, uh, you need to tackle many other <coughs> things uh, that are probably out of the control of uh, a single project. But in islands with a smaller community, you can tackle many more things with just one project as well. Yeah. So basically, with the CFU, what we are aiming is to make sure that we can use the renewable resources in the Atlantic area. So basically, uh, solar in the south, wind in the north, marine almost everywhere, but still you know, a bit immature, to power uh, local transport fields with uh, the uh, hydrogen, the zero carbon fuel. And because the Atlantic area is composed of basically uh, Spain, Portugal, uh, UK, uh, Ireland, there are quite dissimilarities between the different <coughs> in terms of how far are they in terms of a policy framework for investing in those uh, renewable uh, and new technologies, but also the fact that because we need to involve communities, we need to make sure that there is the social acceptance incorporated in the project as well. Okay, so we are trying to tackle these different regions, uh, these different objectives, basically the technical, the economic, and the societal and the policy. Okay. So in terms of the technical, what we are uh, developing is basically a small pile of land. By small, I mean uh, small. Okay. So we are looking at 
uh, uh, texting uh, our partner Peter in television. So they are located in the south part of Seattle. Yeah, these are, this is a technology center that is responsible for the production and the maintenance of most of the solar farms and wind farms in Tenerife. Tenerife, uh, because it's kind of a big island uh, with a significant amount of interest. In. Currently, the amount of renewables that are uh, in Tenerife is only about 8 9%, so it's still very far away from uh, usual the targets that we want to, to achieve. But ITER is responsible for some of these uh, renewable installations. Yeah. So one thing that we have is that all these lots are different uh, locations that uh, they are uh, the solar farms. And uh, in ITER, they have vehicles, like uh, fleet vehicles, that they're using to go to all these installations. And some of them are in complicated roads, steep roads. And uh, what we found what we found at the beginning was that uh, for an electric van to go to these places, it might be a bit complicated and it might not be uh, reaching the, the, the final target. So what we thought is that we could just replace the current diesel <coughs> that are used to get to these places with a hydrogen fueled van. So in a sense, the, the whole installation that we will have up and running hopefully in the next two or three months uh, is consisting of Photovoltaics are already uh, in the installation in Eden. And they have already about 10 megawatt of photovoltaics in the installation. These photovoltaics are used also to power two desalination plants that are also existing in there. And the desalination, the desalination plants uh, cover directly seawater to potable water that is used in the installations, but they have access. Okay, so they have uh, the potable water is connected to the water plant. So. so in the project, what we have is uh, we will put a filling station with a small electrolyzer uh, with a production of about 10 to, 12, uh, 10 to 12 kilos of hydrogen per day because we will be also using only uh, solar energy. Yeah, so basically, we are going to produce only hydrogen when there is sunlight. So it means about 8 to 10 hours a day, uh, as average. Yeah in order to see, uh, also as part of the innovation and the research on, on this installation, how the electrolyzer and the fuel station behaves with these switching on and off cycles. Okay. So basically the type of electrolyzer we use is a BEM electrolyzer, a commercial one, but small scale, and we are going to basically do a stress test on the, on the whole installation uh, to power the, the gas. And with that, we are basically looking at four to five uh, vehicles that we will be using that will be basically replacing the, the diesel vans that uh, are now in existence. So what we have is the, our partner, Logan Energy in Scotland. They are the ones that are producing the fuel station. And they have this container with all the different bits and pieces of the installation. So basically, the only thing that we need to put is a water source, potable water source, and a plug, and then a drain for the excess of water that is produced. And that's it. Everything is completely here. You have the dispenser for uh, 350 bar <laughs> hydrogen that goes in directly into the cars. <coughs> the cars that we'll be using are also a bit uh, unusual, I would say. They are not <coughs> commercial vehicles because they are not commercial vans running on hydrogen now. So what we are looking at is uh, using this uh, Nissan EMB, is an electric car. And what we're going to do is to convert this electric vehicle uh, to a hydrogen power car. Okay, so basically, what we'll have is that we'll have a, a small hydrogen tank, a fuel cell of the car, and uh, with that we can extend the range and the power of the vehicle so that there is no problem to get to these uh, installations in the middle of the mountain. Okay. In terms of the other missions of the partnership, so basically these are the pilot plan will be all, only based in Tenerife. <coughs> But we have also partners in Madeira, in Portugal, and in the Islands, in Ireland. So in these two regions, what you're looking at is how to produce hydrogen the best way and how to use it the best way. Yeah. With the, with the uh, challenge that uh, in when you're looking at uh, islands, the geography, the location, the, the characteristics of the islands are very, very different. So at the end, you don't have you cannot have uh, one solution only for a different location. You need to have almost like a bespoke solution for each of the locations. So in the Netherlands, for example, one of the issues that we have seen since we started developing is that 
about 99 percent of the land is scattered to spread. So that means that you cannot put photovoltaics, you cannot put wind farms, you cannot put anything on land to produce hydrogen. So in a sense, what you do is try to find other solutions. At the same time, for the animals, because they are very small, you can only have three times the inhabitants is the biggest one, uh, it doesn't really make any sense to uh, have uh, cars running in hydrogen, because electric cars is more than But on the other hand, uh, <coughs> the buses and the to go to the islands are a big uh, thing. And uh, they did also an energy master plan a, couple, a few months ago. And basically what they saw is that in summertime, in particular, when there is hordes of tourists going to the islands, about 90% of the CO2 emissions of the, of the islands are coming from the passenger of islands. This is a really good opportunity there for maritime hatch. In uh, Patega, we have also something completely different. So we see the middle size between the islands and the Nisha is not as um, uh, industrialized as the Nisha. And at the same time, we have this small island, Puerto Santo, with uh, wind farms and solar farms that are producing already more than 100% of the, the energy that we need. So in a sense, we need to see how we can connect these two islands using hydrogen storage. Well. Okay, so we're going to talk about the uh, hydrogen storage in the island. So we're going to talk about the in terms of the policy, what we are looking at now is basically we have done this, uh, this uh, literature research saying which, uh, which policies and regulations are existing now. And uh, what we need to do is uh, implement or to propose to the different regional governments how uh, this needs to be changed to make sure that hydrogen can be used as an alternative fuel. Okay. In terms of social acceptance, what we uh, are looking now is basically since the islands that we have in Sifu, uh, they are very much focused on the touristic sector. And as an example, uh, Tenerife and Madeira, about 75% of the island economy is coming from the touristic sector. So for the, for the service, what we are looking now uh, in Tenerife is uh, basically targeting cafe companies the tourists that are coming to the islands, because we think that uh, implementing this new technology, the, the hydrogen economy in these islands through the touristic sector might be the easiest way, because at the end, uh, when a tourist go to the uh probably it will not matter for him or her to pay like double the price to rent a car that is running on hydrogen instead of using a normal diesel car. Uh, basically, you are getting money out of the touristic sector to build an infrastructure in a closed environment that then locals can make use of that. Okay, so that's uh, the idea that we are looking uh, for CPO. Yeah. In terms of GenCom, GenCom is also with the idea of uh, giving uh, energy security to the communities. Okay. And, uh, that. So basically the partners are on the northwest of the north. So in this case, we do have smaller communities, but also we have uh, the Arabic cities, like in uh, Germany, Nazi, and Netherlands, etc. So in this project, what we are looking at is uh, three different pilot plans. This project is now in the second, is in the third year already, and they are a bit behind on the different pilot plans, but what we are uh, looking at is three different pilot plans with three different renewable resources and three different end uses for the hydrogen. Yeah, so uh, there is one that is using using by energy to produce hydrogen and use the hydrogen for heating. The second one will be uh, to use solar to hydrogen for transport in Germany. Yeah. And the third one is uh, wind to hydrogen for storage. At the same time, in the plan for energy, so this is the investments in Scotland, what they are trying to see is how they can take, uh, get some value from <coughs> the oxygen that is produced in the electrolysis uh, process as well. So basically they are covering this with a uh, fishery, with uh, agriculture, to make sure that they can use and take some value out of the oxygen as well. So these are basically the rigors of this project. And one of the main things that they are looking at is basically uh, producing what is, what is called a decision support tool. So what we are looking at is trying to get 
which is the best connection between producing and end use and application of hydrogen in different locations so that uh, investors can see an opportunity for investing on this uh, on these locations. Okay. And just to finish, I want to give an overview, a small overview about an initiative that started about a year ago in Ireland, uh, and it's called the Hydrogen Mobility Island. <coughs> so this is based on uh, conversation of companies, maybe, and I'll uh, just put that on the companies that are involved in the uh, engine mobility group. So as you can see, there are car manufacturers, there are uh, energy producers, gas producers, electrolyzer companies, that are, so these are big companies that are members of this group, and what they are Developing is in conjunction with the people from the income and the Hydrogen Island Association. They are building up uh, almost like a roadmap for the deployment of hydrogen for mobility. You know? <coughs> so, in a sense, the mission is uh, to have this strategy to introduce hydrogen, and they have done uh, a report that was published about a month ago on a uh, three, uh, three step phase of introduction of uh, hydrogen uh, in Ireland for mobility. So in terms of the specific aims, this is facilitate the production of low-carbon uh, hydrogen, so we are looking at only at the green hydrogen in Ireland to facilitate the rollout of the hydrogen infrastructure and also uh, evaluate uh, the use of uh, fuel cell and uh, vehicles uh, in basically in cars and buses now. Yeah. And this is an all-island cooperation, so it's Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland. And the way that we are looking at is basically that, uh, and of course it's coming from Toyota, okay, for urban mobility, the similar for electric vehicles, uh, will be uh, no, there is no competition in that. But for anything that is uh, flight commercial vehicles, or long fleet, or basically uh, fleets like taxis, so it looks like fuel cell cars are the way to go. So basically the plan that we have developed is uh, on these different uh, steps. So now until 2021, 2022, 2024, and then from 2030 onwards. And what they have is basically in these different phases. So we are now in the demonstration phase, which is basically trying to contact the right people, okay, trying to get government support, trying to get uh, uh, oh, no, uh, bus operators, Fleets of cars, companies, other companies involved in that in the rollout of the product. By 2022, there will be the first phase, there will be the first uh, installation of refueners. Basically, also, this uh, sort of two three year cap is what is needed to get all the permission, uh, the planning permissions for the refueling station. So that's why we have this sort of uh, different mindset. From 2024 to 2030, there will be a second phase, which will be basically trying to expand the infrastructure to other places apart from the bigger cities. And this is from what we have seen in this uh, map. Okay, so this is a map file. Basically, <coughs> that will be on map as the official cities. So this will be in the phase one, the location of the first electric stations. And uh, there is already projects approved for uh, two refueling stations, one in Belfast and one in Dublin, with a couple of uh, buses that are coming to that. And from there, on the second phase, it will be basically moving out of the cities following the motorways that are already existing. Okay, so this is the rollout plan, again, only for uh, cars and uh, buses on the cities. Okay. So that's uh, from my sides, and as an example, yeah, of course, the first phase would be <coughs> is uh, 30 buses to be done to the target, 50 cars, and 10 months. And basically, the 50 cars that we are looking now for that is mainly targeting uh, company fleets. So these are not cars for private users, but for companies. Yeah. So that's it from my side. We have to ask for a Can I uh, order the cars if you want to have a hydrogen car from the US? Yes, uh, hydrogen car. Hydrogen car. Uh, that's 
the question. I'm not sure if uh, they will be open the finish stages because uh, in terms of well, there's a study on the planning uh, of the locations. So I suppose that it will depend on how difficult the government is putting the role of these structures because uh, if it gets too complicated to put a few more uh, filling stations in public spaces that anyone can go and put in a car, then I need to go to a more uh, private location. That's why in terms of the cars they are also looking at more private place. <coughs> Thank you.